the vein blueprints. How do we take care of these highways and interstates carrying all the nutrients, all the messages to control everything inside of you? They say if you stretch out the vessels and the veins inside of your body, if you were unravel them and take them out, they would stretch all the way around the world, 16,000 miles of vessels and veins inside of you, not including the nerves. My job today with this blueprint for you and in this training is how do we give you some action steps? How do we give you some health supporting factors of nutrients that have been scientifically proven to help support healthier veins? So I've got my guided notes for you. So right out of the gates here, you can click the link on this page that you're watching. You're able to download this. You're able to follow along. Very straightforward guided notes. Let me show you these right here. So vein health. I cover a lot of info with different conditions. As we go, you can follow along with that. That PDF is right there. Should be clickable, downloadable for you to be able to get. Let's dive in. So the veins, let's start with varicose and edema. Now there's different stages of vein distension and diseases. You get spider veins going on. I'm not gonna sit here and give you all the solutions to eliminate your spider veins, okay? It's just some of you are going to have that consistency over time. I know you don't how, know how it looks. We're gonna try to improve it or at least prevent it from getting worse, okay? Varicose veins where we start to get them distended, stage two. Then we get into edema. Now in this state, obviously, you need to be seeking medical attention. This is nothing to mess around with. We wanna make sure there's not heart involvement like my dad had or liver involvement, okay? Then you start to get skin changes because we're lacking this nutrients. The garbage is sitting down in here and it leads to ulcers, very serious conditions. Now, I wanna talk a little bit more over here of how can we get you better status of these veins and help these legs out? What can we eat? What can we do to prevent some of this from going on? In addition, now, a couple of tests wise you could look at. I think you should still pay attention to the inflammation levels from an ESR perspective, CRP, there it is again, platelets. I would want to know if you got inflammation on the blood side, we got inflammation on the vein side. So inflammation built up and there could be bogging down those, those arteries and those veins. Ferritin, the reason I would recommend measuring this and your liver enzymes is because all of that blood flow from the legs is feeding up and dumping through the hepatic portal vein. So it literally is coming up from the legs and then it goes through a big vein and dumps into the liver. The liver starts processing all of that, cleaning it up, taking it back up into those lungs to get it reoxygenated, turn it into red and kick it out over the other side. So if the liver is bogged down, a big symptom of that is you can start to see swelling show up in the legs, fatigue start to show up. So if you've got some of that swelling, you deal with some of that, we wanna look at the health of the liver, the easy way to measure those is ferritin and liver enzymes, okay? Taking a look at these two. If ferritin's high, we've gotta cleanse that liver. If the liver enzymes are high, we've gotta cleanse that liver. Now, foods wise, to help support the vein and venous flow, fish oils keep the inflammation down along with chia and flax, we got good fibers as well. Ginger, ginger is excellent, it helps supporting proper vein flow, antioxidants, Cayenne helps support this from a swelling perspective. Turmeric, great anti-inflammatory. Sea salt, it might have an imbalance of the minerals. Now, there's lots of swelling going on. This might be the first thing I put in, but sea salt helps those minerals getting you with the chloride, the magnesium, the potassium, all the oligo elements that are needed in a proper sea salt. Citrus fruit, a very good supporter, bioflavonoids of those veins. Acerola is another one that's a good source of vitamin C for those veins. The antithesis, alcohol, smoking, high fructose corn syrup, processed foods, rancid fats, seed oils. You can see the trend here. This compromises arteries very quickly because it's got to deal with all the nutrients coming in. So rebounding, very good for pumping. I just said that your vessels, they got the heart spurt, 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 and it can narrow the passageway to make it travel even faster. But the veins, they rely on the pumps of your body. The muscles are stimulating the veins to pump the blood back to your heart. So to bring the garbage back to your heart, you've got to activate those. I like rebounding for this back because you're just jumping and you're pumping your calf muscle when you jump. So it helps pump the blood back up to the heart. This is a mini rebounder, a mini trampoline that you can use a couple minutes a day. You can do squat jumps, you can do regular jumps, you can do star jumps. You can get one with a handle so you're easier on your knees or low back, okay? Leg stretches, leg strengthening. I have an entire rehab protocols for the knees and the legs. It's important to be working on those muscles. Squats, stretches, 
help those muscles out. Consider doing that liver cleanse. If you're getting spider, varicose, or leg edema, I would highly recommend cleansing the liver. Supporting nutrients. Diosamine helps support leg vein health and circulation. It reduces leg soreness, heaviness, discomfort, burning, cramps, and prickly sensations, shows the studies. The other big one, go to cola. Go to cola. No, not Coca-Cola. Go to cola. It's, it helps the heaviness, the pain, and the edema, shows the studies. And you have these studies in your packet. Help support another great nutrient specifically for vein health. Okay, this one's good for vessels and veins. And then there's horse chestnut. Horse chestnut extract supports healthy vein sufficiency. So it's the distension that starts to happen. For so long, I've been asked, what's a nutrient that can help support varicose veins, spider veins, and edema? The main one I would pick is horse chestnut. So that extract helps the vein sufficiency. Go to cola helps the heaviness, pain, and the edema. So these two nutrients, very important. These are a little bit obscure when it comes to like foods and stuff that might have them. I would consider adding the vitamin C plus the bioflavonoids. Very good choice for the veins to help with that inflammation. So following the nutritional pieces, activating autophagy, adding in rebounding, which can be part of your workouts during the challenge. Okay, one more that dips into sort of veins and arteries, Raynaud's. Raynaud's, it's triggered by coldness or emotional stress or working with hand tools like that emit a lot of like vibration. Okay, when you're real hard on your hands or maybe a lot of computer work over time, your fingertips can turn white as the blood vessels constrict and then they turn blue because of lack of oxygen and then they turn red as the blood flow returns. So it's this disruption of proper blood flow and vein return inside of the hands typically. Testing wise, it's not a ton, but you wanna look if there's any kind of autoimmune component to this. Any type of vessel or vein constriction can be greatly impacted by any kind of autoimmune condition. So that would be the first thing to address if you do have one of those. You can measure the inflammation, the, the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, CRP and platelets with your doctor just to see how the inflammation is going. Some foods to focus on, a lot of the same ones that I talked about with vein health up to this point, but also there's herbs and spices, ginger and cayenne. We talked about them. They have antioxidant properties that help the buildup of placking in arteries. So I like ginger and cayenne for vessel, or excuse me, for, yeah, for vessel health. Omega-3 to help that circulation, garlic, chili powders, those can be helped. Apples, unpeeled apples have rutin in them. Rutin's a good source of those bioflavonoids. And if you have brain odds, it's very important to get half of your body weight in ounces in water to help stimulate that blood flow. Half your body weight in ounces of water per day. Again, cut out the smoking, the alcohol, the fructose, processed foods, rancid fats. This is the only of the artery and vein conditions that I would not recommend extended fasting. And the reason being is because cold temperatures can put you into this whiteness and it cut off that supply. And when you fast, it can make you more susceptible to those cold temperatures because you don't have the food in your body and it's altering the amount of water in your system and amount of blood supply in the system. So this is the only one that I don't recommend extended fasting. You can still do a little bit of fasting, but not extended. So that for that reason, just follow the workouts to stimulate the blood flow, the dry brushing on your arms or your legs to stimulate the surface level circulatory flow. Go to cola, go to cola is a very good one for this. Diosamine is a very good one. The vitamin C, the bioflavonoids. So there's your supporting nutrients, again, to help those vessels and the veins. But doing that movement, following the eating plan, adding in the vitamin C, the omegas, that's the recommendations and some of the specifics breaking this down, working our way through, how do we take care of this other very important part of our body? So there's so many foods you could be eating to help support that. There's so many things you can be eliminating to help support that. There's activities of rebounding and dry brushing that you can be doing to help support these. There it is, peeps.